time out of your weekend, and uh, God bless you for it. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, and uh, hopefully we can stay somewhat dry. Praise the Lord. And, uh, enjoy the time with family and friends. Amen. Celebrating uh, our Memorial Day. Praise God. You know, a man, a guy was uh, dining alone. He was in this fancy restaurant, and he noticed this gorgeous woman sitting at the next table. And uh, he was alone, she was alone, but he keeps glancing over at her, but he doesn't have the nerve to talk to her. And suddenly she sneezes, and her glass eye comes out, and it's flying out of its socket uh, toward the man. And he reflexively reaches out and grabs it out of the air and hands it back to her. Oh, my, I'm so sorry, she says, as she pops her eye back in place. Let me buy you dinner to make it up to you. So they enjoy this wonderful dinner together, and afterwards they go to a theater and enjoy that time together, followed by drinks, and they talk and laugh, and she shares her deepest dreams, and he shares his deepest dreams, and then finally the guy says, uh, you know, you're the perfect woman. Are you this nice to every guy? No, she replies, you just happened to catch my eye. <laughs> Caught my eye, praise the Lord. Well, it was Hanukkah in this tiny village, and everybody was concerned that they wouldn't have latkes because uh, they ran out of flour. And so they called Rudy, the rabbi, to help them solve the problem. And he says, don't worry, you can substitute matzo meal for flour, and the latkes will taste just as delicious. And uh, Hannah looks to her husband and says, Morty, you think it'll work? And Morty says, of course, everyone knows Rudolph the Rab knows grain deer. <laughs> grain deer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God for Rudy. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. John 6, 63, please. We'll start there. And I, I'm going to be brief this morning. Uh, as I said, I know it's a holiday weekend and all, but at the same time, we've got uh, some uh, insurance inspectors coming to take a look at the roof, and we're trying to work out some stuff, and hopefully we can get a new roof. But uh, either way, he's coming this afternoon, so I'm going to be here to to meet with him, and, uh, along with the, the kind of the, the people that are planning on doing the work will be here to kind of arbitrate it too, so we'll see what happens. But we got nothing to lose. We might get a good deal, and if we don't, we'll just be where we were before we started. Basically. But it is the spirit that quickeneth. We just experienced that here just a matter of moments ago, amen? And the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now that's Jesus speaking. So I want to, I'm just kind of uh, putting the scripture out here first of all, just simply to get our minds into the context that Jesus wants us to, to think and to read the word of God. If we read this word in a natural way, the way you would read a textbook or the way you would read a novel or, a, or whatever, you're not going to get a whole lot out of it. It's the spirit. This is a book filled with spiritual words. Yes. So unless you approach it from the spirit, you always end up with just some intellectual understanding that just makes you crazy and frustrated because you can't do it. Amen. So we have to be willing to open our minds and our hearts to what the spirit is saying through his word so that we can receive what it is he really wants us to receive and not just a bunch of information. Right. Amen. So. With that in mind, let's go to Mark chapter 12, and I want to read verses 1 through 9, Suzanne. Mark 12, 1 through 9. He began to speak unto them by parables, and a certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. 
And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, come let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. Now remember, Jesus just told us this is spirit. So it's not just a story. Right. He's revealing spiritual truth here. He's, le he's giving us revelation. In fact, he's giving us prophetic understanding to the word. So then the authority of the earth is delivered to the righteous in the earth. This is, this is a story about the earth, not just about some farmer with a grapevine. Right. This is talking about us and God. Right. So the inference is the restoration of the authority and dominion that was lost in the fall of man in Adam is ours in Christ. Yes. And as the body, we have his anointing for this great end time harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. This is ours. Actually, it's for whosoever will, but until somebody sees it and acts on it, nothing happens. I mean, God's purpose will be fulfilled, but somebody's got to get the spirit and act on it for it to manifest. Amen? God's in the earth because yes. he's in us. Yes. But if we don't act out of his word or out of his way of thinking, we're never going to experience what he wants for the earth. Somebody will, because eventually somebody will get it. Praise the Lord. So look at, let's look at this, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 26. Remember, we're looking at this through spiritual eyes. And I understand people say, well, you can over-spiritualize everything. I don't think you can. You can misinterpret it, but you can't over-spiritualize it. If it's spirit words, how can you over-spiritualize it? You can only do justice to it if you operate by the Spirit, exactly. if you read it by the exactly. Spirit, if you profess it and confess it as spirit words. Amen? So what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He'll come and destroy the husbandman and give it to somebody else. Well, what did he do? He took it away from the Jews who had it first, who were his husbandmen, right? And he gives it to the Gentiles. Which tells me the Gentiles are going to be the ones involved in this last day, yes. for the most part, in this last day revival, in this major revival before the rapture of the church. So, moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Now watch this because you can't just take a, a scripture out of context. There has to be uh, confirmation of that or affirmation of that scripture in other places. That's why I said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. This is why we give a lot of scriptures when we're doing messages, because you need to see that it isn't just, I'm not just grabbing some random scripture and then trying to develop a, a thesis, you know, or a doctrine or a tenet or a creed based on that one scripture. There has to be confirming scriptures or affirming scriptures to, in order to do that. Okay. So moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Now, he's speaking prophetically. He's talking about a point out in the future. So he said, this is Isaiah, the prophet, right? So he says, More, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. So in other words, the moon's going to be as bright as the sun, and the sun's going to be seven times brighter than it's ever been before. So the moon's going to be seven times brighter because it's going to be as bright as the sun. All right, seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. And we just heard it's being given to somebody, right? All right, so the fourth day of Genesis, when you read in Genesis, you go all the way back to the first reference to this. On the fourth day of Genesis, the account, uh, it profiles Christians as the moon, which reflects the light of the sun, yes. the sun yes. of righteousness, yes. amen, to a lost world. Praise the Lord. So it starts in the very beginning. And then Isaiah picks up on this and prophesies further out that it's going to happen, but it's going to happen somewhere out in the future. Amen. So when the light of the moon becomes as the light of the sun, the prophetic implication is that we will minister the way Christ ministered. In fact, greater works. Praise the Lord. Yes. So what? that's what Paul's referring to in Ephesians uh, chapter 4 and verse 7. 
And we've debated, I mean, we've talked about this, Christians and others, for years. How is that ever going to happen? How is it going to happen? Well, he tells us in the very beginning. He tells us in Genesis. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, if you'll skip down to verse 11 through 13. Every one of us given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some apostles. That scripture that I read first, verse 7, is saying that everybody has the grace or the God-given gift of being exactly like Jesus. Yes. Having the same grace for that power. God gives it to you. Praise the Lord. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now that's huge because it's talking about us being developed. We already have the Spirit. We're perfect in the Spirit. But this is developing us into the perfect man or the equal to Jesus. He's the only perfect man. Yes. But he's raising us up unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but that's hard for me to swallow. It's hard for me to grasp. But it's the word of God. It's the truth. It's what he's doing. It's what he, he wants to, us to experience. Amen. So now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we'll read verses 4 through 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 7. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Get the references to light throughout this. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure, this light, this Jesus in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have it in us. We have this God power in us so that the power is of God and not left up to us to try to produce. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has poured himself into earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Right. Paul talks about it being, he says, I am troubled, we're perplexed, uh, we're in despair and forsaken. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In every situation that we may face, every situation that we go through, yeah. God has one purpose and one intention. And that is that he might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Praise the Lord. The healings, the deliverance. They're all secondary because if you get this, uh, this vision, this revelation, this understanding of God in you, you'll be healed. Healing won't be an issue. You don't have to worry about getting healed. You can't, God can't be in you and you be aware of it and not get blessed. That's what he told Abraham all the way back. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. He comes to be in us so that we can release him. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Now look at this. But by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's mind-blowing to me. That expression, this ministry, is not talking about this. Well, it's not talking about only this. This is just a small part of it. He's talking about being a dispenser of the new covenant. Not just preaching the word. I'm not diminishing the need for that. I'm saying you. That's who he's talking about here. He's not talking about ministers, ordained preachers. He's talking about everybody who is a priest and a king in the house of God. We have this ministry. We, we are this dispenser. We are to manifest the life of God. 
Amen. It's not about us trying to be perfect people. It's about us being a dispenser, us being a revealer of, of God. Remember what Ron prophesied here a while back about there's a revealing coming, yes. right? This is, what, this is what this is all about. The Holy Spirit's talking through him to get us all on the same page so we can start thinking the way the Holy Spirit's trying to get us to think, which is spirit, Amen. spiritual. Praise the Lord. The whole fourth chapter of, of uh, 2 Corinthians deals with this, the revealing of the nature of Christ in and through God's people. Read it sometime. It's just that's all that chapter is about. That's all they're talking about. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in verse 2 says, We renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, amen, and we are not walking in craftiness, nor are we handling the, God, the word of God deceitfully, amen, but we are walking by the manifestation of truth presenting ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So what's he saying? God wants to reveal himself. He wants to walk and talk in the middle and in the midst of his people. This is his desire. This is what he wants. Amen. So 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. And I'm convinced this is, we have to come to this place of awareness and consciousness and faith in the fact of what the word says about us in order for this in time thing to play out the way God intends it to play out. And it will. Yeah. It's just a question of who's going to be cast in that role. Yeah. It's for whosoever will. If whoever will take the chance and step out of the boat and whoever will believe what God has said is going to be a part of this, is going to experience it Amen. on every level. Not just the salvation of our families, but the impact we can have on coworkers, on people at the mall, on people that you just, you know, accidentally run into. And we think it's an accident. It's not an accident. God has ordained every person that we interact with for his purpose. Praise the Lord. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, again, look at the, the structure here. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So the Greek root word there for uh, sons is technon. And it actually, it speaks of children. So this would literally translate, beloved, now are we the children of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Now we are the children of God. And because we're children, it doesn't, we don't look like Adults, we're not mature, right. right? So, sons that are immature is what he's saying. Uh -huh. Beloved, now we are immature children. We are immature sons. We are children of God. And because of that, it doesn't look like it ought to look. Yes. Praise the Lord. If John were talking about mature sons, it would certainly then appear what we would be. Right? Right? I mean, when you're 12... You don't look like you do when you're 32. Right. If you were 32, then you'd know you looked like what you're going to look like as an adult, as a mature person. At 12, you don't know that. Exactly. You're still a child. You're still an adolescent, whatever. Right. Amen. So here's the deal. During our time of being immature sons, it does not yet appear what we shall be. So if we're immature, it doesn't appear what we really are. It, it isn't, a, it isn't being revealed right. what we truly are. We just look like we look like. Amen? Mm -hmm. So as we continue to grow in revelation, yes. in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we become mature sons. Mm -hmm. We grow into maturity mm -hmm. so that when He appears, we'll be exactly like Him. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. That's what he's doing in us. That's the reason for being here. Paul said in Ephesians, the purpose of the fivefold ministry is the prophets, the, the evangelists, the apostles, pastors, teachers, is for perfecting or maturing the yes. saints. Yes. And we've turned ministry into the critiquing of the saints, the beating up of the saints, the finding fault with the saints, instead of trying to reveal to them their true identity and their true nature. Because until they know that, 
This stuff can't happen. It won't happen through religion. It won't happen through some denomination. It will happen through people that are growing up into the full stature of Jesus Christ and start functioning the way Jesus did Amen. for the three and a half years that he had his ministry. People say, well, you know, I don't know if it won't take very long. I think Don mentioned this last week. Well, the rapture is, you know, three and a half years, three and a half years, however you want to figure it. Look, Jesus turned this whole thing upside down in three and a half years. Amen. And we can set it right for God in the same amount of time. Because it's God that's going to be doing it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. We henceforth be no more children, but that we might grow up into him in all things. See, God's going to have a people through whom he can reveal his son. He wanted it to be the Jews. They got the first shot. But because they rejected, they are suffering temporary blindness so that now we become the revealers. But if we don't reveal him, He'll get somebody else. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hebrews 3, verses 6 and 7. But Christ has a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice. Chapter 4, verse 7. Again, he limited the certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. So God's looking for people who will say, Not six months from now. Right. Not when I'm 55. Not when I'm 85. Not when I'm 35. But today. Today, he's looking for people that will quit putting off his return, will quit putting off this end time revival and say, today, it starts today. It starts with me today. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. He's looking for people that will say, today, I'm going to manifest Christ today. Amen. I will not only reflect Jesus, I'll be Jesus today. Yes. Now that sounds like blasphemy, but that's exactly what Jesus was saying. I'm going to be like God Today, and they said, whoa, wait a minute, he's making himself equal with God. He said, if you had a clue, you'd know that you were all sons of God. Your own scripture tells you, ye are, you are gods. Yeah. And he said, today, whenever somebody, whenever anybody will say, today's the day. Today, I'm, I'm, I'm manifesting Christ. That's the day he manifests. Yeah. The day that we decide. The day that we determine. Praise the Lord. Again, I've said, when we begin to see the Old Testament as an external covenant, understand it is not a spiritual thing. It's, a, it's an external covenant. It's spiritual in the sense that God's trying to interact with these people, but it's carnal. It's all physical. It's all external stuff that has to be done. If we would ever get to the place where we look at the Old Testament that way, then maybe we would understand the New Testament as an internal covenant, as an internal testament, amen, and we begin to see... The interpretation is not so carnal. The interpretation should be spiritual. It should say, whoa, I, wait a minute, that makes sense, but I never thought of it that way, or I never looked at it quite like that. Praise the Lord. Look at Acts chapter 17 and verse 27 and 28. Acts 17, verses 27 and That they should seek the Lord, and happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him, in him, we live and move and have our being. As certain as your own, uh, of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. You don't do anything separate from God. No. Once you've been born again. You, you, see, one of the great truths of the new covenant isn't that God would just come and live on the earth. But, you know, around us or with us, he's come to live in us. In us. The kingdom of God is within you. Yes. Amen. He lives, he moves, and he has his being within us. And we live and move and have our being within him. Yes. We are one. You can't separate. It. So God himself will come and take up his abode in us, it says. Now, remember Isaiah 
30. The sun is going to be seven times stronger. And the moon is going to be the same as the sun. Yes. So it's no longer reflecting the sun. Now it's the same as the sun. Yes. Praise the Lord. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 8. And verse 8, excuse me. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. The spirit of his mouth. That's the word. That's this spirit truth. Amen. And the brightness or the light of his coming. When He appears in our lives, when we catch this, when we get this, the light of His life drives back all the darkness. The light of His lightness in you will draw, draw, drive the darkness away. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of His mouth. Every time God breathes, light and life are the result of that breathing. Amen. Look at Abraham. Where he said, no longer will your name be called Abram. But you shall be Abraham. Yes, yes. No longer will your name be Sarai, but Sarah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, there came a rushing mighty wind. Yes. The breath of God yes. breathed on them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. We're standing in a day where God is about to breathe again. Amen. He's going to live in us. He's going to breathe into us. Amen. He's going to awaken us to the life that is in us. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and 4. Or excuse me, 2 through 4. 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 12, verses 2 through 4. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one caught up to the third heaven. I'll tell you what happened with Paul. Paul became totally aware of his Jesusness. Yeah. And he said, I don't even know if I was in the body or out of the body because I was totally focused on the spirit, mm -hmm. who I was in Christ. So I, I wasn't even aware of having a body. That's yeah. how caught up in this reality, or this truth, he was. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't tell. God knows. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Praise the Lord. Caught up. Whether he was in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. But when he became aware again, he was in his body and back on earth. He never left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just his awareness that got shifted. He became totally aware of his spiritual truth, of his spiritual reality, mm -hmm. and he was in the spirit. He was in another realm. Mm -hmm. He was here on earth, but he just wasn't operating in the earth realm. He had stepped into the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. The third heaven, he calls it. But you don't have to go 40 miles to get to the third heaven. You just got to take one step out of the flesh. And you're in the spirit. Amen. You don't fulfill the lust of the flesh or the, the sense realm. You'll be in the spirit. Because yes. there's only two options here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That word heaven, caught up into the third heaven. That word heaven translates, if you go back, the root word for that is air. Huh. Air. Not streets of gold. Right? Not little fat angels with harps. Right. Air. The word air in Greek is a word that means to breathe yes. or to expire air. Wow. Paul was caught up into the breath of God, into wow. God life. He was yes. aware of God life. He was lifted up into the breath of God. And that's a place of elevation, of revelation. And in that place, we're no longer in the darkness of the lower realm of Adam's dominion. Even though we may be in the earth, we're not of the earth. We're not functioning like the earth. Amen. But we're lifted above, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. Yes. Above every circumstance of life. Until only his nature, his life, 
is manifested in us. That's where Paul was. That's why Paul could say, man, I don't know. I know to leave and to be with Christ is better because I've already been there. And I know what it is. But it's for your benefit that I'm staying here so that he can be manifest to you. Are you with me? So for us, it's better that we would depart and be with the Lord. I know that's hard to grasp because we haven't been there yet. But we know if we could experience that reality, we'd shed this earthly realm in a hurry. It would be, there would have no hold on us. Amen? And that's where Paul was. Above every circumstance, he wants to manifest himself. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Let your light shine. Right? He said, your light is going to be just like my light. And it's going to be seven times stronger than mine was when I was here. And you're going to be it. Even though you're the moon, you're not reflecting light anymore. Now you have seven times more light, and it's you that's going to reveal it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Genesis 1, 14 through 19 again. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. A couple more scriptures here. We're about done. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. Are you wrapping this stuff together here now? A city that's set on a hill can't be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that, what, they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. What's he talking about? The rapture takes place. Yeah. And all of a sudden now the sun is darkened and the moon doesn't give any light. Why? Because it's not here anymore. Exactly. Praise the Lord. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Praise the Lord. Let your light shine. That's the one reason Jesus said in John 14, 12 that we would do greater works. Praise the Lord, because we have greater light. Praise God. Yes. The light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, which is seven times the normal sun. S-O-N. Praise the Lord. Righteousness of God in Christ is who we are. We have been justified. We have been declared just as if we were spotless as Jesus just as if there were, was no flaw in us whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Amen? Proverbs 4.18, last scripture. Proverbs 4.18. You are the light. And then he tells us the path of the just, we've been justified, is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day, the day to where Christ is revealed in us. Amen? We've been given a vineyard. Yes. And it's our responsibility to receive the fruit of that vineyard yes. and give it to the husbandman yes. who is our God and our Father. <coughs> How do you do it? You let your light shine. You yes. become who he has declared you to be. And your light will shine brighter 
than his did when he was here on earth. It's amazing. And it isn't corporate. This isn't, I mean, I've heard that argued. Well, it's because there's more of us. No, that has nothing to do with how many. It's just that one, that light will be seven times what it was. It, the influence, the impact, the effect will be that much greater. See what I'm saying? And this is not about us being perfect people. It's about us being mature people, about us growing up into who we are and knowing that and then acting out of that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's done everything he's going to do. Now it's a question of us getting the revelation and stepping out in faith and doing what only he can do through us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. I told you I'd be brief. This could be some kind of a record. I think my light has shown. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. God bless all of you. Let your light shine. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are, whoever you're with, you don't have to be religious. Just be like Jesus. Amen. Just, just give them the positive feed that they need. The unveiling that He wants to heal you. He wants to restore you. He wants to bless you. He, just give Him a chance. Praise the Lord. And watch Him work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Light. Let there be light. And what happened? Light was. Praise the Lord. I'm saying, light be. Praise the Lord. And it is. It shall be. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you again. Thank you all for those of you who have served the country uh, in the military uh, or in any other capacity. We appreciate it very much. Have a great weekend. And the Lord bless you all. Yes, sir. Dismissed in Jesus' name.